This is Review from the Bridge, official podcast of the Belfast Giants for KingdomoftheGiants.com. Today's Tuesday, the 12th of September, 2023. My name is Patrick Smith. We're live on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, and you can download us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and a load more of your normal podcast providers. Um, on this week's show, uh, the Giants are on the board in the Champions Hockey League with a home victory over Bolzano, and this followed a spirited defeat in Austria, which gives us a lot of hope for the season ahead. Let's take a look at those. Um, we'll be joined by the shutout hero of Saturday night, Tyler Beskarowani. And our good friend Aaron Murphy will be along in a second. He not only called the CHL games these last two weeks, but he also has a new role in the clan. Um, and we'll do all of this without any mention of any stupid looking £22 fan chains. So uh, let's do our best at that. Mr. McJemsey, how are you? Paddy, I'm not too bad. There's Sam, there he is. I'm not yep. that bad. We've just finished, Simon. I'm so, curious. Uh... That's not working. Can you hear me? I can yes. hear you. We can hear you, mate. Absolutely. Carry on. Hi. <laughs> we'll we'll carry, carry on. I'll sort it out. We'll carry on. It's live, boy. How are you doing, Davey? All right? I'm okay. I used to think I was stressed, Paddy, but now I know I really am. Life's, life's gone back. You know, real life. Kids are back to school. It's homework. It was like, I've seen somebody complaining there. Who was it? Why are we waiting? Jim Lynch. James Lynch. Why are we waiting? Because Lily had my laptop at a quarter nine, and I hadn't cut the goals for the podcast. So you know, <laughs> real, real life's here. The kids had the, the kids had. She was doing something in Photoshop on my uh, on my laptop, so I had to wait. The school homework was done before I could get into the uh, into the podcast business. So apologies for everybody for making you late, but uh, there we are. You know, it'll be, here we it'll are. be all right. right. It'll be all right. Well, to see, we get a thumbs up from Simon. What do you think? Can you hear Simon? I can't hear a thing. Can't hear a thing. Try, re try rebooting, mate, and try to come back. This could be the this. shortest show ever for you, too. I honestly <laughs> can't hear a thing you're saying. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if I'm trying to keep trying. Right. Let's get stuck into it. What we'll do to start off is if, if Simon's not going to be able to chat this, then bring somebody uh, decent on instead. Let's bring somebody decent on instead. We all know him as the uh, as the voice behind the mic with Fire Play, and he covered the last two weeks of the Champions Hockey League. He also now is known as a senior advisor of hockey and broadcast operations at the Glasgow Clan. But we know him as our mate Aaron Murphy. How are you doing, mate? Boys, I had uh, Siz, Siz was had enough of me on the on the game the other night on the <laughs> broadcast, so he doesn't want to listen in anymore. So that's that's a good sign. Siz doesn't want to hear anything. <laughs> How are you doing, mate? You keeping well? Yeah, no, I'm good, guys. Uh, I'm delighted that you guys are off the mark. Uh, I, I feel like, and I guess the team would probably feel the same way. You probably could be two and two right now, or even better than than uh, where we where we're at with the CHL standings. But that's uh, that's hockey, right? It's not always uh, the way it goes, but how it goes. And so, I think it was a great performance the other night. Uh, I'm sure you're going to get into that. And I thought maybe probably should have beat Innsbruck as well. Could have got a point to, in Rama as well. So it's been a good campaign. Let's have a look at that. The Belfast Giants were subject to a 2-1 defeat at the hands of H.E. Innsbruck in Austria last weekend. Um, the goals coming from Gordon Green, Corey Mackin for Innsbruck and Matt McLeod for the Belfast Giants. And that's Tyler Besker. Arani was 23 shots against and two goals against Evan Butenhuis. Butenhuis? Beitenhuis. Beitenhuis. 23 shots against and one goal against. Um, Davey, I'll start with you on this solid effort. And as maybe mentioned, maybe a chance missed. Yeah, I think when you, when we look back over the um, CHL campaign so far, we can be a little bit hard on ourselves at the time as well. You know, a one-goal game effectively in the first game, obviously going to the second game, was always going to be difficult. 24 hours, you know, after the, the first game, less than 24 hours after the first game and faced, or finished, and you're going to a place like that and, and going against one of the very top teams in Europe. So you can, you can write that one off, that that wasn't probably a game that we were, you know, wouldn't have been one that Kiefer had circled as a W, but... The other three games, two of them one goal games, and then a bit of a good win there on Saturday night at home to Bolzano. Innsbruck, we could have won. Again, we talked about discipline and stuff, and we've walked this fine line where we've found ourselves, you know, on the penalty kill an awful lot, and these teams can score. And not only that, the drain you when you're down bodies, Miley Gendron, Gendron's obviously still out of the lineup. And, you know, that drains, and it's the same guys going, you're going back to the well, the same again, you know. Curdy having to play thirty plus minutes. This this just drains, you know. And then he's so on the he's doing thirty minutes on Thursday night, and then expected to put in another big shift on Saturday night. While we're trying to get bodies back, and I guess the CHL we went into with our eyes open. I know we were a wee bit facetious, saying we're taking it as a bit of a preseason, and of course we are because 
we're going to be like six games or four or five, six games into the season when other teams are just starting now. So that's going to set us in good stead domestically. But, you know, things could have been different. Murph talks about us being one and three. We could have been three and one or maybe three, one and one or, or two, one and one or whatever. But, um, you know, it was a good, solid performance in Innsbruck. I think they'll look back on that as maybe one that got away again. But, you know, right it or wrong on Saturday night for sure. But you know, one of the things I have on my agenda is the fact that Belfast Giants did fall foul of a lot of penalty trouble. It was, you know, it, it, we they had seven power plays to our five. Um, and it's something that we have, you know, we play this American style, North American style of hockey in a European setting. And sometimes that is going to draw maybe penalties that we see as soft, but they see as normal. There were some soft calls, but there were some soft calls the other way as well. The, the problem is, I think, on this campaign is that these new rules, like you can score two or three goals on a two-minute two yeah. minute hooking call. So uh, we've seen the rules work both ways because Matt McLeod scores a shorthanded goal, so one of the power plays is negated, but we've also seen them score a few. Like It also, you made a good point there, it, it wears guys out. The penalty kill is a different animal. Um, you look at a guy like Oliver Cooper blocking shots and, and, and sacrificing the body. By the time you get to the third period, there's not a lot left in the tank. And the guys are still coming together, right? Like, let's be honest. No one was going to beat Tapera. Um, I talked to a colleague in Sweden when he saw the draw and the schedule. And he said there are SHL teams that would be quivering in their in their Bauer Supremes having to do the va- the walk of death or the valley of death, going to Rama on Friday night and then going to Tampere on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about SHL teams with 10 times the budgets of an EIHL team would be going, we don't want to do that. But here's the, here's the treble winning Giants going into Rama, having a lead. They needed an empty net goal to salt it away. Let's be honest, no one's beaten Tapera Tampere in this tournament, so let alone an EIHL entrant. So that was going to be tough less than 24 hours later. I think maybe Innsbruck, Innsbruck just seemed to be disjointed. And for me, they were the least sort of systematic team or the least well organized team that the Giants have faced. So maybe that caused some problems because it was kind of all over the, the shop at times. And, and again, they needed a power play goal. But I think that one, one was where, where there was definitely a point. Uh, or maybe even a win with a bounce or two, but that Biden Heist played well. And even their goalie or their coach, uh, Coach O'Keefe, said, We got outplayed in all regards here tonight. Our goalie got us the win. So sometimes you come up against a hot goalie, and Giants fans can't complain against that because there was many a night when the, uh, the headliner tonight, I'm just the opening act, the headliner, Tyler Beskarawani, has stolen many a game where maybe the Giants didn't deserve to win. So that's just life, man. That's hockey. One of the things that took Davy as well from that Innsbruck team is they have some real standout players. And what I was watching um, Kevin Wah because uh, obviously he had played in Belfast previously at the Friendship Four, and uh, I think it was the opening Friendship Four in 2015. He was part of part of um, Northwestern. I uh, want to say he was captain of Northwestern there, but anyway, he I thought he was great for Innsbruck the other night. We talk often, and I don't know how much you actually end up watching the podcast, um, Aaron, but you know, we talk often about this friendship for it and what it's brought, not just the Belfast SA, because it, it's more and more players spreading out throughout the EIHL and Europe and beyond. But like some of these guys that have played in the friendship for it, it, it's almost you see them playing in these European leagues, and you have a kind of not an affinity towards them, but you're like, oh, he played in Belfast and he played in Belfast. And as we go out on these European adventures and we're coming up against some great players that, you know, could end up in Belfast or but for a flip of a coin could be playing in Belfast because it's big, big, it's becoming a really good place to come and play hockey. But we've we've talked again and again and again about this speed kills attitude and you've seen the speed of one and you see the speed of some of these guys coming out of the NCAA. But I was talking to somebody yesterday about the change in the, in the dynamic of Guys coming here, the Patrick Waz, or not the Patrick Waz. <laughs> wow, Jim Va- the French of the, the Jim Vandermeers. Um, who am I thinking of? Played here a couple. Paddy Dwyer. Sorry, Paddy Dwyer, the Jim Vandermeers. The guys that come here for a university deal at the end of their career for one more year in the game. And now it's changed where we're getting the 23, 24-year-old first-year pros, second-year pros with speed to burn. The game's changed. It all drips down from the NHL. Of course, the enforcers went out of the game. Speed came into the game. And now these young guys are coming through university, through Belfast. There's catch on that. And that, that has been driven largely by Belfast and the friendship for for So something I think Belfast as a, as a club can be really proud of what they've done for the league. 
hundred percent. It's my favorite. Uh, Sis and I talked about this the other night. It's it's my favorite uh, weekend of the year. It's crazy. Like that in the playoff mm-hmm. final weekend. Like I wouldn't miss it, right? So uh, even Mr. Fitzpatrick came up to me the other day, kind of winked and said, can I still count on you for the friendship four? I said, of course. Like yeah. as long as you want me there, I'll be there. So yeah, you're right. And, and you look at like, like even Nathaniel Halbert though, like there's an affinity for guys when they are in the league and they go elsewhere yeah. as well. And there's an affinity for guys we see in the friendship four and then they, they come and play in the elite league or beyond. So it was interesting to see why it was interesting to see Nathaniel Halbert, but I still think the Giants were the better team on the night. So I, I think that there was a point there and maybe even three points. And I think there's probably a bounce or two there that just got in the way of you guys being two and two with a real chance to qualify for, for the next round. Again, if, if people aren't familiar, it's not the same as before the group stages. It's 16 teams go through from a, a straight round robin and you got the different penalty uh, rules and, and the shorthanded rules. So it is really a different animal for the Giants. And you should tip your cap to, to Todd Kelvin and the Cardiff Devils for playing CHL rules as well. It's again a point like people People like to give out about everything, but no one ever tips the cap when someone does something positive, right? The Devils could have said, we don't want to play CHL rules. We want to get ready for our domestic season. But that, that's that's a classy move, and that's something that I would advise in Glasgow that we would do if we were your opposition on that occasion. So, look, we have to start being positive, and you're right. The, the, the Giants have opened up a floodgate to, to – to people actually want I know that there's other people in the league that want to come to the Friendship Four, not because it's great fun, because they want to look at players, because they know that you're mm-hmm. looking at players, so they're at a disadvantage, you know? So, yeah. you know, be careful what you wish for, because uh, there'll be more than me from Glasgow in uh, at the Friendship Four this year, I can assure you of that. Simon, welcome back, mate. Good to see you. Um, you can hear us now. Before we move on to Bolzano, I'll give you the last word on, on Innsbruck and, you, and your thoughts on how the Giants played. I thought we played really well. I, 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 just as Murph said, I was, I was watching the game at, at home and, uh, you know, I, I thought we competed really well. I thought we had chances that, to be honest, I thought we missed far too many great A chances. We really had big, I mean, Nazarian had an opportunity. Um, Barry got an opportunity. Uh, Kieran Long, that's three that really come to mind. And, um, and I think we missed the net on all three. And that's the bit that, you know, early season form, Gripping their stick. I mean, people talk about it all the time. Gripping their sticks a little bit tighter than, than what they normally would, and maybe just trying to hope for the for the first goal of the season for them to get them up and running. But I, I genuinely thought, out of all the three games that we've started in the CHL so far, I genuinely thought we deserved to win that one for sure. The Luco game, I thought we deserved to get something out of it. Win it, you know, maybe not, but definitely get something out of it. And we obviously didn't compete in the Tampa game, but um, it was, you know. It was a really, really good test for us. Basco played well, um, but you know when you're when you're two one down and and you, again par plays a couple of soft calls. It was just just a wee bit too far for us, and and uh, unfortunately didn't come out with anything, which was disappointing. Maybe one of those games where what another one of those games where what might have been with regards to on the road, but. We were in for better things. The Belfast Giants haven't played their three away games. And of course, the new format of the CHL meant that it's the fourth different team in game four. And this was back at the SSE. And it was the first points on the board for the Belfast Giants, who took a 4 nothing win over Hitchy Balzano in the Steve Saviano derby. Uh, mm-hmm. Quinn Preston with one. T- Daniel Tedesco making his mark with two goals. And Kohei Sato on 34-58. To make it, uh, uh, which is runs out to four. Um, Tyler Beskaroni, or if you're watching the highlights, Beskaroni, uh, 28 shot shut out. And uh, and who was Nicholas... that guy? Says, <laughs> that? no idea. Sounded a bit like David, you'd be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Nick and uh, Nicholas Svedberg, uh, 25 shots on four goals against. Um, Murph, I'll start with you on this one. Not just a great game, but a great atmosphere as well. Uh, look, I mean, there was, what was it, 6130 or something like that in the building? I mean, that's unbelievable stuff. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's it's a hockey town, right? That's when you have that kind of numbers for, for, for uh, uh, an Italian team coming to town like that. And there was traveling support as well. So it was a magnificent atmosphere. But I thought right from the get-go, the first few shifts, the guys came out. They competed hard. They knew that they, look, this was a must-win game if we have any hopes of, uh, of progressing. And the atmosphere was electric. And I thought Ben Lake being back in the lineup, 
lineup was just what the doctor ordered. Sis and I talked about the faceoffs being under 40% or under 39%, I think, Sis, in the yeah. first three games. Laker comes back in, you start winning some faceoffs, and it's, it's amazing how little things like that. doesn't matter who the coach is or what the systems are. If you're not winning faceoffs, it's hard to win hockey games. So Laker comes back in. I thought uh, that Nazarian line is, is really uh, catching fire as well and certainly really impressed with Greg Prince in every game so far. So, look, it's hard to replace a Conway. It's hard to replace a, a Goody. But, you know, Tedesco played well. Uh, Prince played well. I mean, I think that uh, Bariga was unlucky, left with a knock there. Bariga scored 25 goals last year. If he if he catches his his groove, he's going to be a real nice replacement as well. But we all know what Tedesco is all about after the Guilford season, and I saw him play for Italy at the World Championship. So it's a wonderful pickup, and uh, he's, a, he's a likable character as well and seems to be very coachable. So I think he'll fit in real well in the dressing room there. But look, that was a game they had to win, and as you guys did last year, every time you needed to get the points you found a way to win, and I just thought Belzano looked like shell shock right, right from the get go. And Bess Karawani was better than Nicholas Fedberg, and Fedberg is a former NHLer. So again, I said to I think I said to you on the night says uh, Bess goes in mid season Besco form, which should be scary to nine other elite league teams. And you know it was great to see Koei Sato get that first goal and a, a meaningful goal in a Giants jersey as well. What you saw as well, says in that game, was not just the appreciation for the goals. We all love seeing goals scored, but there was a standing ovation at the end of that five on three. It just yeah. shows it. And the big smile that was on Tyler Besker and his face at the end of it has been going around Twitter and the likes because when because we recognize the effort that goes in, especially against a team like this, to keep yes, we were winning the game, but to keep us winning the game. Look, I said on the night on, on VAR play that and I when you get a five on three against you and you come out the other side of it without conceding a goal, it actually felt like a scoring a goal. It genuinely did. And that's how important that, that penalty kill was. Guys were blocking shots. Um, obviously, you know, Matty McLeod blocked a shot on that and he got hurt and he didn't return to the game after that, which was disappointing. Mm-hmm. Um, and losing Bariga early in the second period as well, which was, you know, unfortunate. And, you know, Mark Garcia didn't return to the third period. You, you mentioned Best Garwani. Uh, I'd said to Murph early, I mean, the first period, early on in the first period, I just got the feeling there's days in practice and morning skates and stuff like that. You just see guys and you you just know that they're dialed in. And Besco was dialed in from the first drop of the puck. I picked him up and took him to the arena on um, on Saturday. Um, I'm had a good chat on the way down the road. And he was, I just knew he was feeling it. And when he's in that sort of form, He's, he's 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 unbeatable, which is you know exactly the way it turned out. He was unbelievable, and I it, not just best Garwani, but the guys in front of him. I don't know how many block shots I have. Davey might be able to, to switch on there when you come up when you jump in the second. But I, the amount of block shots will be basically stop getting through to Besco because guys are sacrificing their body. Again, I think we had was it another eight penalties or six penalties at least. Again, in your twelve minutes or sixteen minutes, whatever it was, the full time you're on, you're um, short-handed, and it's it, it, you've no idea how difficult that is as a defenseman. I Charlie Curdy played thirty minutes and twenty-eight seconds, I think it was, against um, Innsbruck oh, on Thursday night. Yeah. And he played. I think he only played about well, but I say he only still played about twenty-six minutes on uh, on Saturday against Bolzano. It was a total team effort. Everybody chipped in. Everybody contributed. Everybody did exactly what they were supposed to do. And they're starting to see and feel exactly what Adam wants them to do. Um, and it was great for Tedesco to get a couple of goals. Great for Quinn Preston to get that first goal. And great for Kohei Sato. So I thought we we totally deserved it. To be very honest, I thought Bolzano got off late at four goals. I watched the whole game back on Sunday. And we genuinely pro- we sh- probably should have scored about seven or eight. But... Again, take the four, take the victory. Um, and it puts us in a position now where we've got a game here. We've got a few EIHL or EIHL games. We've got a couple of friendlies obviously this weekend against Glasgow. But we've got a little bit of a break in the CHL and hopefully we can get a few bodies back because we've got a chance to progress here. You might not have looked at that on Friday evening, but we genuinely do have a chance to progress in this competition. And I know Adam wants that. He really does want to try and do that. And he's going to be trying to do his best to, to make sure we go to the next stage. 
Davey, uh, Murph mentioned there as well, Ben Lake back in the lineup, which probably was a real key to it as well. We see young Mason playing really well in the side. It, overall, just as a as a sort of a marker that the Belfast Giants want to make, not just in the CHL, but looking ahead to, you know, Glasgow this weekend, which we'll talk to Murph about in a second, you know, Dundee the weekend after and the Elite League. This, I think that this performance shows what this Belfast Giants can do already. Yeah, if we come to Laker first, and, and Murph's absolutely right, when we're talking about face-offs, and I talk about it often, possession being nine-tenths of law, and you can't just replace a Scott Conway because what Con's brought was massive amount of face-off wins. So apart from the goals and everything else he brought, he'd give you possession of the puck, and we've missed that over the last number of weeks when Lakers was writing numbers down there. Um, I think um, Aaron had said it was 39% or something on the face-off before, and, you know, 62% on the face-off and, and even strand situations on Saturday night. Ben Lake himself, 57% face-off wins through through the evening. So he gives you the puck. And if you're starting with the puck, it makes the game a lot easier. Now, I know Sis was saying there that Bolzano got off light at four, but you just stayed, just shows you how well Besco played. They outshot us, like 36-29, something like that. They outshot us with 19 block shots. And, you know, if you're looking at goaltenders, for, for people that are listening, goaltender generally, the top-end goaltenders will be in the... 92, 93% sort of range. Top goal, so goaltenders just go from about 88 to 93. So in that, so every 10 shots equals a goal. We've blocked 19 shots, effectively saved ourselves two goals by, you know, laying the body down in front. If you want to look at it in, in real sort of, you can't, you, you can't make that a fact, but we've stopped 20 shots getting through on a goaltender. So, you know, he hasn't had to save any of them. So that, that five on three power play, that roof, they, when it, whenever it was Belfast Giants back to even strength or back to full strength, you know, the, the roof nearly comes off. It's as good as a goal and it gets it gets the whole momentum back into the building. And you've seen Besco, but there's no stress with him. He's shelling peas there and he's doing it with a big smile on his face. And that is infectious to everybody around him. And it becomes a game rather than a job and when you're doing something you love well you never work a day in your life as you know as we've said on this many times and the guys are having fun out there and it's so much more fun watching people having fun than it is watching pe people be stressed in their work so this all bodes well for the next couple of weeks as Simon says there's opportunity here four points are there to be got there's another two games here both at home there's an opportunity and the guys six will points, have it, or six points sorry Sam all right my bad six points still to be got here in these games coming up and we've got obviously the Glasgow games and we've got you know a few domestic games to get ourselves even more tuned up try and get healthy again it's hard to say you know we're trying to get guys healthy and you know the end of August the start of September but that's the way it goes as well hockey's a tough old game and you know there's points there to be won and, and this team looks good for them the highlights of the game are on YouTube. Belfast Giants' next um, game in the CHL is until the 10th of October. And while you're here, Murph, just very briefly, we're, we, you are now quite heavily involved with the, uh, the the Glasgow clan. And we've got the two games. I know, I know, Debbie. We've got the two games coming up this weekend uh, in pre-season against your side. What can we expect from them? You're all giving me one of these, but yet when you called, I answered the call here tonight. You did. You know what? Dave. I said to uh, Robert Fitzpatrick the other night, he said, oh, I, I can't believe this, you know, and I said, well, I waited 14 years for an offer from the uh, the Teal Tower. Uh, you had plenty of time to offer me a roll, boys, so, uh, you know, here we go. I waited 21 minutes. I waited 21. Yeah, so I, I said to Robert, Kitchy waited 21, so I got seven to go. Talk to me in seven years, so maybe maybe he'll come back in seven years, but we'll see. Look, it, it, it is what it is. I love the game, um, and to be around something new, I mean, obviously the new owner is, is a man I've known for, for 14 years and have worked with in some capacity for 14 years. I believe in the culture and the ethos around his company, whether it was Premier Sports, Sports, free sports, uh, or Satanta and, and NASN back in the day. So it was an opportunity I, I couldn't uh, couldn't turn up. And look, it, it's a chance to, to to put a stamp on something that, let's be honest, it's probably been an underserviced market, an underserviced fan base in many regards over the years. So a chance to do things in a different light and see what we can do. I mean, it's Glasgow's a big city. It's the biggest city on the Elite League circuit. It's a great city. <laughs> you know what? They didn't have a good season last year. Let's be honest, it was it was dreadful. And they still were selling out or close to a sell at every game. So such as the, you talk about the, the Teal Army loving their hockey, the Purple Army loves their hockey. So we just want to do things right on and off the ice and see if we can bring some uh, silverware. It might not happen in year one, might not happen in year two, but we're, we certainly recruited 
uh, well, I think after a late start, I mean, there were teams that had already signed, you know, core groups and we were still waiting the, to, to see if we could hire a coach. So no excuses. We've caught up. We've got our guys in and, uh, you know, a couple of tough nights in Cardiff because they're well ahead as well. As we know, they were four or five games in when we come up against them. But uh, the guys competed hard on, on the first night and, and showed some character on the second night, a man down. Um, but that was always going to be tough. You guys know that. You had a couple of tough nights against Bel- or against Cardiff as well. So I think Siz and I talked on Saturday. I mean, like, it's, it's about finding your systems and finding your form and finding some chemistry. And I talked to the coaching staff and a couple of the players on Sunday after the, the second defeat. And they're in good form and, and they're ready to rock and roll. They're looking forward to seeing what they can do against the treble the treble winning Belfast Giants uh, home and away. And I'm looking forward to being at both and hopefully catch up with some of you uh, on one of those nights. Absolutely, Mitt. Well, listen, we really appreciate your time. Good luck in the new role, uh, in in the in the concept of the new role, not in the wider thing of the Glasgow clan, but in the new role that you've got within that. It was good to hear you up behind the mic at the weekend and the last weekend as well. And uh, as always, we really appreciate you taking the time. Well, to it was to great to work with, with Sis, and hopefully we get to do that at the Friendship Four. And I didn't know that we were saying Beskarawani wrong all these years, Kitchy. Beskarawani. And uh, forever to be known as that. But guys, look, thanks for having me on. I look forward to, uh, you know, the game is uh, is on the clan webcast Saturday. It's it on Giants TV or on Friday. It's on Giants TV Saturday. And uh, we'll be back on the CHL circuit October 10th. Red Bull Salzburg will be live on Viaplay as well. So check Viaplay.com. And if anyone <laughs> wants to come for a little road trip to uh, Glasgow, uh, check out clanihc.com or drop me a note and we'll take care of you uh, like you take care of us uh, when I'm in Belfast. So as always, boys, uh, we'll see you at a rink. Top man. Thanks, Murph. Take Murph care. Iron. Big thanks to Aaron Murphy. Always great. Awesome. Always great having yeah. on. Like the man works so hard for the game, not just on TV, but now he always rolled within the Glasgow clan. So I do certainly do wish him well. I'd like to welcome back our viewers on YouTube. <laughs> My the, bad. Uh, Sorry about that. Listen, it, it happens. But what we're, what I am going to do is I'm going to drop you, gents. We do have the as promised the interviews post game. From the uh, post game from the game against Bolzano, that uh, that Mr. Kitchen took time to come up with. Bomber, I had to put you away from the locker room there. For some reason, Natasha Bellingfield is playing. Um, it's not the normal music after a game, um, but after three games in the CHL so far, I'm disappointed with not picking up any points. You must have been delighted with the effort, with the, the result especially, um, and obviously doing it in front of, of nearly 6,500 people, you must be delighted. Yeah, definitely. I mean, our fans came out and showed showed their support all night, and I think that really uh, pushed us to the next level. And, you know, we faced some adversity tonight, losing some guys, but, you know, in this locker room, it's next man up, next guy ready to go. And I think that guy stepped up and really performed tonight, and it's uh, great to get a win for our fans. You have already played with Quinn Preston. Um, he got his first goal for the Giants tonight. Um, he showed what he's capable of. Um, and if anybody's like me, they're going to be really excited to watch him play in the IHL. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I mean, Quinn's a great player. He's a really good person. I think that him coming here really shows that he's ready for that next step. And he's got a great shot and moves on to the next uh, position really quick. And he's always open. So I think, you know, having Quinn here and a couple other guys is just uh, great for the team and great for our fans. We, we obviously win the game 4 0. Best girl on me. Uh, we did that all right, as usual. Um, but it, it was a team performance. Everybody in front of him sacrificing themselves, blocking shots. That 5 on 3 was absolutely huge yeah. um, and I, I was on commentating tonight for Viaplay. play it, to be honest that's as good as a goal to me yeah no I think you know something like that is something we build off of our found out foundation is really important to get block shots and make sure that Besco is able to see the puck and if there is any rebound we're there to cover for him and he's solid all night like he is every year and I think that some guys had some big blocks o- OC had some big blocks after some uh, long shifts and I think that it's something we can build off of and keep moving forward and you didn't find your mom and dad yeah. Um, you know, uh, Jeff Bomb Senior's in the house, so along with Harry and, and uh, Jamie's here as well. Um, so it's good to have a family around him. Yeah, it's always great to have the family. You know what? When they come out, I try and play as hard as I can. And uh, I think well, that... you should do that every night. <laughs> you do that every night. I think so. I mean, it's always good to have family in town. It really brings a little bit of home to Belfast. And, you know, my parents even said it when they came over. Belfast has become our second home, and we just keep moving. Top man. Cheers, Bomber. Thanks, Kitchy. Jake, solid performance here tonight. Um, I think that relationship between yourself and Charlie Curdy has been growing over the last few games. Mm-hmm. Uh, but playing a front less crowd here tonight, uh, getting the result and, and the team effort, 
uh, you must be very happy. Yeah, obviously we were searching for our first one for a couple of games here. Um, it, it was great to do it in front of the home fans. We gave them a good show tonight. As regards to uh, me and Curdy, I'm liking playing with them. I think we got some got some good chemistry. I played with uh, some more offensively a lot in my career. And I think that's a little bit easier for, for myself to, to read off that. I think we're gelling well and hopefully we keep doing the same thing we did tonight. Obviously we're disappointed with the, the result in Ninsburg on Thursday evening. I think you, you put that to the bed here this evening with the, the four goals. Obviously Basco come off yeah. big, but I already said it to Jeff Ball and, and uh, Tyler Beskarwani. It, it's a team performance here. Yeah, tonight. absolutely. Besco stood in there big for us. There's lots of moments, five on three, where he came with some big saves, some big saves or where we were lapsing in our judgment. But you know what? In, Innsbruck was, was good for us. We, we felt that we were in the game. We were right there. The stats showed that we could have easily won the game. It didn't go our way, but we just felt like tonight was a big moment and, and, and we showed up for the fans tonight. A couple of days off, um, well, one day off and then you got the golf day, mm -hmm. but you must be looking forward to getting a bit of respite. Yeah, absolutely. It's been quite a bit of travel. Quite a bit of travel. <laughs> <laughs> She's a rocket. That's a show. But there's been quite a bit of travel. You know what? It's it's been fun. We've been we've been bonding in, in all these new places for all of us. But it, it's going to be great to have a, a nice day off here in Belfast. Enjoy the city. Enjoy enjoy what it can offer us. And uh, we'll get right back to work starting next week. Golf on Monday. The Holloway Golf Club, sponsored by Tiro Media. Um, must be looking forward to the challenge. Uh, you know couple of nice wee prizes up for grabs yeah. and uh, you obviously got the chance to play Valley Castle last week in good weather so let's hope the weather's going to be okay but are you, can you play at Hollywood a couple of times before? Yeah, yeah, I've played Hollywood twice. It's, it's going to be fun. I'm excited to get some fans out there with us. I'm excited to get all the boys out. It, it, it's going to be an awesome day. Maybe maybe I can win something, maybe not, but it's going to be great to get everyone out there. Top man. Cheers, Jake. No problem. Thanks. Oliver Cooper after the 4-0 victory against Bolzano in the CHL. Uh, first home game uh, in the CHL, big crowd behind you. Um, I know we've been disappointed with the, the results so far in the CHL, but I think that uh, answers a few questions tonight. Yeah, you know what, we've been talking about it ever since the beginning, that we needed a big game to kind of set us on our track, and uh, it's nice to be able to do that at home in front of all those fans. 4-0, uh, Tedesco getting a couple, so it's okay. Kohei Sato getting the goals, easy for me to say. Um, and Greg, uh, sorry, Quinn Preston uh, coming up big, Beskar Wani. Uh, big at the other end, um, but again, I keep using the word team, uh, solid team performance tonight. Yeah, I think everybody was pulling on the same rope. I mean, we had guys doing everything it took to uh, to get the W, and I mean, obviously those guys had big performances and they let us, and everybody just followed behind. Now you move in, you've got a couple of games next week. Got a couple of days off, but you've got a couple of games next week in pre-season side of things against Glasgow home and away. Um, another city that you haven't been to yet, uh, but um, we talked about this when you arrived in. Uh, hadn't been overseas. You've been to Belfast. You've been to uh, you've been to Dundee now. Uh, have you been to Dundee? No. No. Who are you? Who do we go? We have uh, Cardiff. Cardiff. You went to Cardiff, yeah. and then you went to Finland, um, and you've went to Austria. Yeah. Um, Finland and Austria aren't two. They're, they're two great places to go to. Yeah. No. It was it was an unbelievable experience. I mean, coming over to Europe, obviously hockey was number one, but uh, being able to explore and see the world is. Uh, a major plus and I'm uh, very fortunate. That There's a lot of places to... outside of North America. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say so, Greg. I, uh, I took too long to come over. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Oliver. Thanks yeah. very much indeed, mate. Yeah. Thank you on. very much. Miss, um, you, uh, all right, well, Heineken, it's one of our sponsors on, so it's probably going water, it's okay. Uh, you must be very pleased after that performance this evening. Um, I think it's fair to say that 6,000 people are going home happy. Uh, there's a little group of Bolzano fans in the, in the corner that didn't look overly happy, but with the effort and the performances that you've had over the last four CHL games, um, getting that W in the column must be feeling a hell of a lot better. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's a big lift for, for everybody. I mean, obviously, I thought, as you said, I thought we played well enough to win two of the first three CHL games, and, and we came up short. Uh, it was great to see. I thought everybody contributed tonight. I thought everybody had a good game. Uh, that score was great in Nets. We had some guys, you know, really big, timely goals, really big blocks. Penalty kill was excellent, killed a five on three. Um, it, it was just a, a real team effort. Uh, you can tell the guys are feeling good about it. Obviously, the home fans, 
uh, we're, we're treated to a really good one, and it's really nice to get that first win in the Champions League, and hopefully we can carry that into, into the next games. When, when we look at the, the performance tonight, um, you, you touched on Besco, you touched on um, a couple of other guys as well, but I think overall that's that's a solid team performance. Uh, have you already said to a couple of boys I've done interviews with, that's as good as I've seen in an early season form uh, for a long time. It was it was a full team effort. Uh, everybody was everybody was pulling in the same direction. Uh, like I said, I thought Besco made some really big saves early in that game to keep it even. Um, it, you know, the obviously the the kill was good. The five on three kill was was massive. Uh, it, you know, to keep the game where it was. Some some really big goals. Some, some really big blocks from guys guys like OC and stuff like. It, it was a real team team effort. Um, and, and there was never a point in that game where where I felt like we were. Uh, you know where it was going to go the other way so it was you know credit to the guys and, and a heck of an effort and you know hopefully uh, you know like I said the, the home fans certainly were, were treated to a good one I'm sure the boys will go out and enjoy it uh, you know tonight and, and not too much <laughs> not, not too much but they, they certainly have earned it so um I think it's fair to say a game of taste about adversity tonight um obviously Brigham went out in the second period uh, we lost a couple of other guys who didn't uh, say ice time in the third. Um, hopefully, they're you know they're they're all okay and they're ready to go soon. Uh, but everybody got a chance. A young Mason Alderson comes on, gets a couple of shifts. He, he certainly didn't look out of place. No, I thought he I thought he did well and contributed in the shifts that he did get. Uh, Longer came back on D for a bit there and, and helped. Everybody was everybody was pitching in and it was just kind of the next man up and. And we kept rolling, and, and it was like you just said. Everybody was doing their job, and uh, you know, working together. And it was it was a, a very very solid performance that we're extremely happy with. Cheers, Miss. Thank you. You got, you got it, sis. You can enjoy your hand again there, man. Robert Fitzpatrick, nice pin. Um, Simon. After the, I'm looking very tanned as well. Thank you very been much. Been away for a few days. Yes, we were we were on a. Um, some people might call it a junket. We were on a pre-inspection trip to Paris for three days last week, looking at the Olympic provision. So it was, um, it was good. You can do it. Like, you can do it. <laughs> I thought you were away with the family. Is that coming up soon? No, that's last week. Oh, Next right, okay. week is the Atlanta Falcons against the Green Bay Packers in Atlanta. So, okay. All right. yeah, okay. sorry. Let's move on with this. Um, <laughs> we, uh, you know, we, we obviously had a, a tough baptism um, in the CHL over the last two weekends. Um, Going to Luco, putting a great performance in, unfortunately not getting the result. Tampere was all going to be difficult, we knew that. Um, and then another solid performance against Innsbruck. But from a home perspective, from 6,130 people in the building this evening, um, and uh, coming out with a 4-0 win, uh, you must be very happy. Well, I'm nearly, I'm, I'm nearly thinking about dusting down the CV and putting the line now, shut out in Europe. <laughs> um, I mean, I think, I think in fairness, Sam, We've known from the start of the season there's something in this bunch. You've, you've, you've been talking about different players and we've been talking about dynamics and lines and all the rest. But tonight was always going to be a test. Oh boy, did they pass it. Yeah. They passed it, but not only did they pass it, it was a CHL game. 6,000 people got it. 6,000 people yeah. cheered, paid, bought beer, bought snack, all the rest. So, you know, you couldn't anger me tonight. That has been a triumph of the last... From we come back from COVID, yep. it's been a triumph. Yeah, and you've obviously had the CHL uh, top dogs over as well. So uh, Monica, Monica and Martin um, uh, have been walking around and have basically been looking at this and saying, but this is Belfast, how? How? Um, you 5,000 people in. There are clubs in Europe can't get 5,000 people. How? 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 Well, I mean, you look around what's happening outside the arena in the last couple of days with the Maritime Festival. The number of people, you know, run about the, the, the side of the buildings and, and back up, back and forth Titanic. Uh, the site itself is getting busier. There's no doubt about that. Obviously, with the Odyssey Place now, I think it's been called. You're right. Uh, no, you're right. Um, you're right. I didn't know it was being announced. Right. No, no, you're um, right. With Odyssey, Odyssey Place, Place getting no, busier right. and the restaurants and you're everything right. taking its place. Look, I, 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 um, I'm very, very positive about the rest of the year, Sam, and I genuinely do think that um, we're not very far from, from really exciting, some really exciting news. And I think we've done the hard yards to make it happen. And um, I look forward to being on the podcast with you and Patty and, and Davey and discussing that when the time's right. 
we'll look forward to it. Um, now we turn our attention to your friendly game against Glasgow next weekend. I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, Michael O'Rourke, the new, the, the new owner of Glasgow, has reached out um, in a spirit of friendship and all the rest which I've reciprocated. Um, and I'm, I'm delighted to meet the man because he, he's obviously as passionate as I am, wants yeah. his club to breath achieve. Fresher. He's a breath yeah. of fresh air. Um, he's, he's a dub. Um, we've been talking about Dublin for years and years and years, so maybe a combination of me and him can get that conversation going as well. Who knows? Well, um, I think it's, as I say, the old face team. Um, the boys are on the ice there tonight, getting sort of the ice has been a few challenges in the last few days. 27 degrees in Belfast, it's going to be hard to can keep well, ice ice. Been, I think I was told today that uh, the money that I'm paying for the two new compressors that have been installed temporarily until, until the new plant comes out is there to be done. But hey, we're winning, who cares? Yeah, absolutely. Big thanks to Robert Fitzpatrick, Jeff Baum, Jacob Friend, Oliver Cooper, and of course, Jeff Mason. Um, some very interesting stuff there as well from Rob Fitzpatrick, and I've just I have to say I'm very jealous of him going out to see the Atlanta Falcons against the Green Bay Packers next week because that stadium in Atlanta looks second to none. Um, is that rugby? No, mate. It's American football now. I'm a Jets fan, so last night is I best not talk about it with what happened to Aaron Rodgers. But this isn't the podcast for it, and you guys would not really care. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's the American, it's American football, and I hope he has a good time. Right. We spoke about him uh, not that long ago with Aaron Murphy. Uh, we spoke about what went on against Bolzano and how well he done, and we're delighted to welcome back to a view from the bridge, Tyler Bescaroni. <laughs> how are we doing, fellas? Uh, how do you, uh, it turns out we've been pronouncing your name wrong for all this time. Listening to the uh, the, to the the highlights, I don't know if you've seen the highlights, but the commentator that the CHL used was calling you Tyler Bescaroni. Oh, that could be Taft's fault. I know uh, the announcer in Innsbruck came over to chat with him and uh, tried to go to over pronunciations of the the names, and so maybe uh, maybe that one's on tap. But uh, <laughs> no, it, it your... doesn't really matter. I've 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 heard them all, but the worst one I've heard was Bosco Loney. That one was in Texas, and I uh, that was actually an official bill that came to my house, and I thought it was weird when I I was renting furniture. And the the person asked for my name, and I said Beskwani, and they said, "Okay, sure." And they put it down as, a, and they didn't ask any questions. I said, "Okay, that's going to come off a little weird when it shows up." Sure enough. And now, and now Simon Kitchen's writing it down for use in future Jazz TV yeah. webcasts. See if, we can, see if we can get it right between now and the end of the year. That's nice right. Give us your gives your take, not just on the weekend, but how the CHL is going for you. Um. So surprisingly well I, I have to say you know I, I even I I think me coming into this I was a bit of a doubter you know having uh going in, into the you know Finland obviously it's a prestigious league with a lot of really good players and uh the same thing with uh I guess the Ice HL now with evil back in the day but um you know my my short stint there there was a lot of good talent and um I really wasn't sure what to expect and um you know we We've been in, what, I'd say three out of the four games now. Maybe that Tampa one got away from us a little bit. But even at that, you know, we were in, in the game with them until, I'd say, early second period, mid midway second period. So, um, yeah, I surprised myself, I'd say. And I, I think we surprised a lot of people throughout uh, throughout Europe and, and uh, in the CHL here. And then, obviously, a fantastic uh, performance uh, against Bolzano on Saturday night. It <clears> must be good as well in front of such a crowd like that at the SSC Arena to be able to come home after you know two difficult games in two different games in Finland against uh, against two teams who are probably you know going to be there or thereabouts come the end of the CHL. Probably a missed opportunity maybe against Innsbruck, but played really really well. But to bring it back home in front of a crowd like that and shut them out, it, it must feel good. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, I think I think the word the word that I would use to it is would be rewarding. Um, just just by having tough travels, you know, uh, the adversity that we've gone through early on already this year with with the travel and playing these top end teams and uh, you know back to back nights against Tampa and stuff like that. It's uh, it come out of those those three road games without any points, even though we probably deserved a couple. Um, to be able to come back home and, and really make a statement where, you know, um, we, we belong in this tournament and, and, 
you know, we, we deserve points. I think he was good for the guys' confidence on this team and uh, the coaching staff as well, right? I mean, for them to, to, to look up and down this lineup and say, you know what, guys are playing well. Maybe they're gripping their sticks a little tight and then come in against Balzano and, and put on that performance and top to bottom. You know, everybody contributed. I was listening there to Mason and, and some of the boys talking. Uh, it was a full, full effort, a uh, full game, 60 minutes by everybody on that team. And, um, you know, everybody laid it out on the line to try to get those points, especially for that crowd at home, uh, 6,000 fans, you know. And so it was really good by, by everybody. Besco, I want to ask you, not, not specifically about the game, about happiness. We've had a couple of guys on over the last couple of weeks and we've been talking about the importance of being happy on the ice as well as off the ice. In fact, then obviously we, we did a little exit interview with you summer before last when we said it was goodbye, Besco, hello, Tyler, and you were going into the real world and we've talked about the real world sucks and you came back and won everything and, and you've came back again. And that's five on three play, exactly that face that you had on at the end of that five on three penalty kill the other night you know playing with a smile on your face happy off the ice you know it must help help the game for sure um i don't know i've, I've always said that if if you're not happy playing hockey then you're probably playing for the wrong reasons and so um you know to to have a smile on my face while i get to play the game that i love you know I, especially at this age with you know my my family here watching and stuff like that you, you just can't beat it right and so um there's really I, the way i see it is even if things don't go well on the ice you know what at the end of the day there's there's bigger things there's um for, for myself you know it's my family you know i get to come off the ice and i think the, the one one example i would say was last year against that game against cardiff and i kind of I, I flipped the lid some would say um where you know i broke my stick and the net and that whole shebang um, Sarah was kind of saying, you know, oh, I'm not sure if we should go down and see him. He seems pretty pissed off and this and that. And then, uh, you know, once, once Austin showed up, there's a big grin ear to ear and he didn't, he doesn't care. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Right. And so that's, uh, that's why that, that puts a smile on my face every time. So that, that six months between the end of the previous season and coming back again, how much did that how much was the did the real world really suck? Because we live in it, and I can tell you, it sucks for me. But like you know, <laughs> I I must did it suck to, to force you back into the game. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, yeah. it, it was. Um, I actually all right, didn't. Oh, right. Well, then not not suck, but how much did you miss the game? That's the big thing. I mean, it, it's it's the camaraderie with the guys in the room. Yeah. It's being in that dressing room on the ice. The competition, right? It's it's stepping on that ice and, and having a reason, a purpose to play and, and that, that competitiveness that you, you just, you can't really explain. You can't really find elsewhere. You can play other sports. You can, you know, you can play golf. You can do all these other things, men's league, whatever it may be, where it, it, you just don't find that competitive edge elsewhere. And I think that was the part that I missed about it. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I'm not one for the gym, so I did really miss that part and, and things like that. But um, no, I, it, like I said, it's just that competitiveness that you, you just can't find anywhere else that's, that really made me want to come back. You've already threw the plug in there about the golf. Tell us about <laughs> your longest drive. <laughs> uh, well, I, I kind of reared back for that one. It, uh, I had to go see Barb today to get some work done on my back for that one drive. <laughs> uh, no, you know, it was uh, it was a good drive. I actually played pretty well yesterday, I have to say. Uh, I I don't know how long it was. It was it was about two yards farther than Coops. Let's put it that way. So <laughs> maybe maybe you could talk to Coops. He might have the distance, but uh, I don't know how long the hole was. We were we were three hundred and fifty two yards. So we were we were. What do they say? Forty-two yards out, something like that. Forty-one yards out. Yeah. Down, down hell. When? When? Not, not bad for two shots. Yeah, <laughs> three wood. <laughs> Basco, Davy just touched on it there about the happiness side of thing, um, and it, you know, it just. I've watched a lot of hockey over the years, and goaltenders don't normally have the same sort of outlook as you have. I've played against guys who chase me around the rink with a, the stick. Actually, there's a guy 
watches a show called Big Jacko. His dad chased me around the Donald Ice Bowl with a stick, trying to take my head off. Um, how is it? I mean, you're, you're just so calm in the net. I mean, it, it just yes, you've lost the rag against Cardiff, which I absolutely loved. Um, but how come you just stay so loose, so relaxed? What what's what's your thing? I don't know. I just I'm just a calm person. Not much really gets to me. Uh, it takes it takes a lot. Um, it takes a lot for me to, to, to lose my glue, like, like the way I did in Cardiff. And, and even at that, I think it was just, that was just a combination of a lot of things that just uh, wrong place at the wrong time, I guess you can say, but for me to just, just be calm and that I, I just I enjoy it. Right. So I have fun with it, having a good time with other people at the same time, you know, whether it's the reps, it's the players. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I do on the ice that you, you guys probably don't know about. I mean, and when the guy where we have the puck behind our net and whether the other players in front of our net and they're standing there trying to block one of the sides, I, I normally tell them to go on the other side and I ask them, you sure that's the side you're supposed to be on? Are you sure? And so they, they usually say, well, I think so. I don't, I don't know anymore. Is this it? Am I, just, am I on the right side? So, the little yeah, things you, like you that. Do- we that's all know you like right. to have it. you like to take the mic out of people. What about your the, the first day meeting and phoning me in the meeting? I had to pay a fine. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> that cost me a fiver. No, that was uh I don't yeah, I just I can't remember who, who, who was talking. I can't remember who was talking. It was the the media staff, so Shanid right. um, and, and that crew. They were kind of going over the media stuff and what not to do. And I don't really have social media, so I wasn't too worried about it. But I was still listening and paying attention. But I mean, I figured I get a, a rise out of the guys there, and, and you just—I know your phone's always on, so I mean, why not? Yeah, thanks for Patty Take it on. I, I feel the fiber. <laughs> Let me let me let me brief you. Let me uh, tell you what to get my five out of says. The, uh, the, the uh, let, let me briefly bring you back to uh, the CHL. Obviously, when we in this run of three league championships, when we first won the league, Shane Owen was backstopping us in the CHL. The next time we won the league, Pete Jones and and Wiss backstop us backstop us in the CHL. How pleased are you that you stuck around to get your go of you know probably something that you earned. Correct. Yeah, this is uh, this is the first time I've actually stuck with the same team that I've gotten in the CHL for. So it's uh, it's kind of fun to be able to actually play with that team and and try to do something with that team. And I feel like you know I we the team last year, everybody on that team probably deserved to be on, in a CHL opportunity. And I kind of wish that they would change the format where they would almost do it at the end of the year, just so that you are playing with that championship team. Um, but I mean, it, it, that's, I guess that's the biggest thing with our league is that you, you just, the turnover in players is so much where some of these other leagues, I, I mean, I'm sure the Finnish teams, they, they may have had like Tampa probably has what two, three, maybe four new guys on that team. So they've all been together before. So it, it kind of makes sense for them, but, uh, yeah, I've I've gotten a, well. I've been on other teams where I've I've gotten them into the CHL and I've never played with it. So it's actually fun to be able to do that this year. Obviously, you know, playing in, playing in Europe isn't isn't new to you. You know, we played DL, you played Evil, you played you've played in these leagues. But in regards to this, in regards to what you've had in Finland, has it lived up to the expectation of what you were hoping it would be when you when you went into the plan? Yeah, um, you know what it's it's competition that you don't really find elsewhere. Um, obviously, you know, you, you're getting that top end talent in the NHL. And, um, you know, for me, just going to those NHL camps is probably, probably, well, some of the highlights of my career, but to be able to do this, to go to these, these cities, to be able to say that I've gone to Finland and played against some of the top end teams, some of the top end Finnish players or, or whoever, maybe the Austrians or, or whatnot, you know, it's, um definitely some of the, my favorite highlights and stuff that I'm never going to forget just to be able to, to say that I've done it and, and gone there. Best go obviously this week we've got this week with a couple of exhibition games the weekend and, and then another week of practice before we really get you know hit the domestic scene is how crucial at this stage this season is getting that sort of that practice on and the rest of courses to, to go along with that with the the eye on the the, the challenge cup prize coming soon. 
I think the biggest thing right now is kind of getting in our routine. Cause we, we haven't really had an opportunity yeah, to get of any sorts of, of routine done, right? Because, I mean, we showed up um, our first week. We were busy with media stuff. We were, you know, we were at the rink till 4 o'clock in the afternoon at times. And we were doing so much stuff that we didn't really get a chance, an opportunity to get our routines and with practices, with workouts, with, you know, spending time at home, things like that, getting our rest in, right? And so now for these next these next couple of weeks, we finally have a full week here where we get to, you know, get into a groove with each other, get into practice time with each other where we, we kind of get to know um, a little bit more chemistry, I guess you can say, with the guys in practice and, and tendencies and things like this where um, it, it's going to be crucial coming into next week and, and even this week, you know, prepping for a full week and then being able to play against Glasgow. It's not going to be easy because I know, I mean, it, just human nature, right? You go from having playing it against competition in the CHL to now an exhibition game. Um, it, it's going to be tough to get it ramped up, but I think if, if it's going to be an eye opener that, you know, at these, there's a lot of good teams in this league as well. And I think you, you can look at, uh, I actually told Kiefer that I was a little disappointed in the Innsbruck game just because I know we're going to be facing a lot of competition just as good as that team this year in our league. And so, uh, we're going to have to learn how to how to take points on the road and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, there's these next two weeks is going to be crucial to get the, that, uh, you know, a bit of a groove in with our team. And how, sorry, says just before you go there, how important is practice at this stage? I was watching something, uh, one of those YouTube shorts or something, and there was an NHL, was a coach in America or North America, he was talking to talking to his students, probably a, probably a college coach, and he was saying, you know, um, top NHL players playing 30 minutes a night they're only touching the puck for the maximum of about 60 seconds during a game even in that 30 minutes but in practice they're getting 5 and 10 times that amount of puck, puck time if you like how important is the next kind of 2 weeks for, for the guys coming in here just to start getting their hands on the puck because those CHL games although we've done really well in them there's times we've been having to do a lot without the puck yeah, you know, I think it's crucial. I know guys don't touch the puck a whole lot, but at the same time, you know, you've got um, we're, we're playing with three lines, right? And we have mm-hmm. we do have a couple of injuries, and so guys are going to be getting a lot more ice time, and they'll be touching the puck a little more. And so, it, I think it's crucial at this point, also early on in the season like this, where um, you know the system that we play here is is not really played elsewhere. Um, you don't really see that type of system in North America. Well, you don't see it often anyways. And so I know a lot of the D men, especially coming in here to this, to this season, we're, we're kind of looking at this system as a, like, okay, this is, this is foreign to me. So I'm not a, entirely comfortable with it. So these next two weeks, it gives us guy or these guys a little more time to get comfortable with it. Um, just getting our power, our special teams in, into place, you know, our, our power penalty kill has been, outstanding these these last couple of weeks and so uh that that we're going to keep up having to work on you know getting video down uh power play you know it, it hasn't been clicking the way we want it to so you know it gives us a little more time for that um just the little things right that, especially now that we've been able to pl- get a few games under our belt it gives us a chance to to take a step back almost and, and kind of look at what we've been doing properly and what we need to to correct moving forward before Simon was coming to you, was the, uh, can I just ask a question about the real um, superstar of the Beskarwani household? How's mm-hmm. Austin? And we have a question about from Chloe asking, is he ever going to be announcing the team onto the ice? And he seemed to have a good time at the golf day as well. He had a blast at golf yesterday. I wasn't sure if he was going to make it the whole round, but uh, yeah, he, he pulled through. He was laying on one of the greens there halfway through the round, and I kind of – I. I Popped him up with some sugar, so he made it through. But uh, he crashed on the way back home. So uh, no, he's doing awesome. You know, he's he's settling in great at home here, and uh, he's he's found a couple friends around the area as well. And you know, we have a great setup here. The the team set us up properly this year. So uh, yeah, he's doing awesome. Fantastic. And Scott, as for been... the announcing, I'm not sure. That'll be uh, – <laughs> he, he's got a little bit of work to do with getting to know the, the players this year. He, he knows everybody from last year pretty down, but uh, he's got a little bit of work to do yet this year. I'm sure we'll have a bit of fun with him. Listen, Besco, I really, really appreciate your time. Uh, I know it's late and you like to get to your bed early, but I have one last question. Do you know the Muffin Man? <laughs> the Muffin Man? <laughs> 
we'll maybe keep it for another store, another night. But that's we'll, we'll carry on that the rest of the season. Best go. Listen, thanks very much, mate. We'll speak to you soon. Thank you. All right, take care, guys. Have a good night. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, Besco. Big thanks to Tyler Besco. Right? For the crack, I will go on. Right. So, la- well, last season, Davey, what did we? Let's go. We'll maybe let him tell it the next time he's on. Okay. Are you gonna? Right, are you gonna? Are you gonna, are you gonna okay. spill it? Uh, or go on. I don't care. On. Go on. <laughs> so Besco likes it. He's got his very sweet tooth. Probably about thirty of them. Um, and uh, he loves. Is he still sitting in the background? He is absolutely. <laughs> so. He, I mean, there's been a couple of years with sort of last couple of seasons, we've sort of experimented with him. We had the the pastel donatas he had. Tell me about it. I, I spent the fortune on them. <laughs> spent uh, the fortune on them. So, well, obviously, with being the, the you know the, uh, the first home game of the season, competitive one, um, I went for something different, and I went and got him a um, a, a thick, sticky toffee pudding um, muffin. And Ooh, uh, where'd you get that? Uh, the, it was That's in the garage in Cumber, garage in oh. Cumber. So I was on my way to pick him up on Saturday, and I'll, now I, the problem is gonna I'm gonna have, have to go to the every garage in Cumber every I'm week. Have to go every day, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but uh, yeah, he, I mean, I don't think he, I don't think it touched the sides, um, <laughs> and uh, he was, he was straight into it. So, I can but yeah, so now, that. now he's the muffin man. I can sympathise with that. Yeah. <laughs> Lego, Lego muffin party, do you? Oh, mate, love him. Love big, big, big chocolate muffins. Love making them with the kids as well, and then I eat all of them. You know what I mean? Oh, that's a yeah, kids. Let's make chocolate muffins. You disappear in about a day and a half. <laughs> big thanks to yeah, big thanks to the to the muffin man, uh, Tyler Beskarwani, <laughs> for his uh, <laughs> for his time and after what was a, a fantastic performance at the weekend and through the CHL. Just briefly, a question, lads, uh, about the CHL. Um, one I've written down here just for ourselves. It's come at a cost. Um, there have been a series of, of injuries. Obviously, we still have a week of preseason before we get into the Dundee Stars and the Challenge Cup. And it's probably just over, a, it's probably still a month before we play elite league games. So fundamentally, you know, if, if, if we are full of ourselves and we're confident in our team, then the Challenge Cup group should be something that we can roll through and hopefully, you know, get ourselves a roll. But then we want to go after that number one seed that we've had for the last number of seasons that have allowed mm-hmm. us to host the final. The CHL is coming across with regards to the injuries. Ben Lake is now back, but we saw a number of injuries that were taken um, just the other night. Has it been worth it, Davey? Yeah, look, they could have happened in practice. They could have, they were all, they were all game, game, in game injuries, if you like, you know, there were, there were anything that could have happened in any game you're playing that could have happened in any practice session. So, it's hockey, it's physical sport, these things happen. I don't think any of them were nefarious, to quote Jimmy Bryson. He likes that word, doesn't he? So um, I don't think any of them were, um, you know, <laughs> they were, none of them were idly ordinary. I don't think there was any dirt involved really in any of them either. So, you know, just a few just genuine sports injuries. Nothing you can do. Get on with it. Hopefully, Simon? The, boy, hopefully the boys are quick fixes. Yeah, it's, I just find, uh, sorry, sorry before you say, the reason, the reason I asked that, this question is obviously because I see, you know, you can see from uh, maybe slightly coming around a little bit because you see that from Tyler Beskarowani the enjoyment that they get from playing it, the fact that it's they're determined that it is and that the guys enjoy what they're doing. To me, it still sits as a preseason sort mm-hmm. of means to get the team up to speed before we go into what I see as the real games, which are the Challenge Cup and the Elite League because they're the ones they're the ones where we have realistic t- uh, designs on titles as we've shown so to take any sort of sustained injury that would hamper our elite league or challenge cup in what i see as a pre-season go on says oh, no, you go for... the only the only thing i would say about that party is progressing in the champions league is such a massive recruitment tool for next year you have the opportunity to come and play twice as many games in the chl you have a chance of playing and you know I just it is, I, I, it is, but there's Tyler Beskarwani who's qualified for the CHL three times and only came back to playing it once. So sorry, what's your point, caller? <laughs> my my point being, you're saying it's a recruitment. <laughs> you're saying it's a recruitment tool that brings players back and brings players in, right? Tyler Beskarwani retired. He didn't. He I, I didn't say. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, well, I wouldn't say he wasn't bothered about the CHL. Well, I think. I was... if, 
Well, Sam, he's come back and he's playing it now because he likes the, the wider thing, the package of the Belfast Giants. It's not Tyler Pesquani's not playing for us this season because we're in the CHL. Mm. Have you asked him? <laughs> Maybe next time we will. <laughs> but, but, you, but you can it's see a good what debate. I mean. it's, a, it's a fair debate. It's a fair debate. I, I you know, would, we, we, would, we've talked. Go ahead, say. I would say it's actually a part of his reason he came back. Definitely, I, I think that's that's definitely been in his mind that you know he he has a chance to follow on from winning a championship. He, I think he probably you know he made a he brought up a really good point actually about maybe playing that at the end of the season so you can actually mm. celebrate it and play in it with a team that mm. got you there. Um, but you, can you imagine, do, going to, yeah, hundred percent. Could you imagine getting never, to play in CHL happened. after a fifty-four game season? Uh, in the league here, it'd, it'd be really, really tough. It's, I, I think it definitely played a part uh, in his decision. However, uh, you know, probably the reverting back to the original question regarding the injury side of things, has it been worth it? You know what? You can get injured just walking along the street. You can get injured in practice. You can get injured in, in games. And, and none of them have been, as David just touched on, there's been no dirty hits that have created the injuries. When you look yep. at, uh, you know, there's a couple of hits. I mean, obviously, Miles uh, Gendron got hurt against Luco uh, in the first game. Um, Laker didn't play in the first game. So we've, we've never had a game where we've actually been fully fit. So do you know what I mean? It's, it's a difficult one to try and um, try and think, it, is, it, is it worthwhile? Would it do it again? Would it want to game the Champions League game next year? Yes. Um, I, I think it definitely would. Um, because, again, it's a good recruiting tool. Charlie Curry has basically said, well, we'll have to get Charlie on about it, but you know, playing the CHL was our major pulling point to get him here. Um, and there's, there's other he's guys played, like He's played enough time on the ice of it, so he, I'm hoping well, he's, he's enjoying got it. it worth it, yeah. I mean, that's insane. I think it was, I think it was 27, 27 and 30, 30 that he's played in the first three games. I think he was down to 25. I mean, what's he slacking off for? Um, for a couple of games, you know, but 25 minutes as a defenseman, and let me tell you something, he's, he's contributed every time as well. He's been a he's, he's been a really good signing. And uh, but again, when you talk about the game on Saturday, um, like, yeah, for me, it was just a total team performance. I don't think the individuals, yes, they, they always pick them out, um, but it was a total team performance. I think you know, my, my question is tinged with a bit of mischief towards the towards the CHL. The, like I understand that you know we play preseason games. We're playing two this weekend against Glasgow. You know, these you, you don't you know, you're going to go into them full pelt because you know you want to get up to speed for the for the um, for the league and for the cup. So I understand you know that these these can happen anywhere. I just guess that there's a level a little level of frustration that <coughs> that happened the preseason and not you know. In, I can I can understand injuries happening in um, league time and cup time when you're going after, and that is the 100. I don't see these 100 percent games, but then what do I know? I'm not playing on the ice. Um, uh, we do have one more uh, weekend of preseason, and as we mentioned earlier on with Aaron Murphy, that is against the uh, the Glasgow Clan uh, Friday seven thirty p.m. over at Brayhead Arena and that will be on Clan TV um, and then we come back to the SSE Arena once more on Saturday at seven p.m. Uh, to face them in a second game. These are obviously the last two games before we go in and then we'll play all the Scottish teams once more. Mm -hmm. um, it's a new look, it's a new approach, and it's a new coach in Glasgow, Davy, and it looks you know they they. I was um, I was a uh, I was a very uh, I enjoyed being a guest on the three on three podcast the other week. I was a moonlighting boy, so I apologise for that. Um, but they asked you know about you know who I think would be the surprise package, um, and on that I said I thought the the Glasgow clan might be top five. In fact, I think I said I, they they could be a top four team if this team clicks. I think the goalkeeper looks excellent. That was a really great listen on the three. You listen, says, yeah. It's 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 not been out yet, mate. Oh, <laughs> You've not listened. I've been, I've been busted well, there. <laughs> That's all right, mate. I'll not be listening. Um, the, <laughs> <laughs> this uh, the um, the Glasgow clan from the very start <laughs> have had this kind of revolving door policy of of coaches and GMs and, 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 and players. And it's been, we, we talk about rotation in our place of people coming in late. But the Glasgow clan, right from their inception, haven't really ever got 
into a settled period in their history where they've had settled off the ice, settled coaching, settled play, playing staff. So this is maybe, says talked about the new ownership coming in, being a bit of a breath of fresh air, new broom sweeps clean and all that stuff. So maybe there's an opportunity for them to, you know, kind of hit the reset button. They've obviously recruited quite well on paper. I haven't seen them on the ice. I certainly haven't seen any evidence of them yet. Um, this weekend, it'll be good to see what they're going to bring. They'll be wanting to put best foot forward, as Neil, the coach Russell would say. You know, so um, it'll be a couple of interesting games this weekend. Uh, I would imagine there'll be goaltending changes for us again. It, it would make sense that West would get a bit of time on ice. Some of the guys that haven't got so much ice time, if they're going to be in Belfast, this Belfast and Glasgow this weekend, they'll maybe get a few more minutes than they have been getting. Spread that ice time around and use this to get time on ice time, time on the puck um, in, in game settings and just see where you go. It's at the end of the day, they are two exhibition games, but you want to take something positive out of them as well. So, I mean, as Davy said, you know, and, and as we heard earlier from Robert Fitzpatrick and from Aaron Murphy, you know, this is a, they have a new approach here. Uh, what are you expecting from Glasgow? Listen, again, you know, I agree with what you said. I think they could be a surprise team this year. I also think Fife could be a surprise team uh, this year. But every every team has definitely improved. There's make no mistake about it. They have. There's an awful lot of teams, and there's, there seems to be quite a bit of money available um, with uh, with Glasgow this year. So, look, <laughs> thanks, David. The um, I, I think they could be good. And and again, you know, they've obviously got a home game on Friday, and we're playing them uh, in Belfast on Saturday. Um, but it, it's 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 let, let I, let's try and get through this unscathed. Um, you know, results. Yeah, you want to keep the, the wagon going. You want to get wins, whether it's preseason, whether it's CHL, or whether it's Challenge Cup or League. It doesn't matter. You want to win every single game. Um, but I, I would take getting over the weekend um, without picking up any more injuries because again, you, you know, you need to get ready for the big games which happen in a couple of weeks' time. I, I think it'll be a good challenge for sure. That they've. They made some good signs. You touched on their goalie. He does look, um, you know, pretty decent. Um, but then again, we've got the best goalie in the league in Beskarani, and we've got a very capable Jackson Whistle. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see how it turns out. The games, as I said, Friday, 7.30 p.m. away to the Glasgow clan over in Brayhead. You get that on clan TV. And then we are back at the SSE Arena to face them very same Glasgow clan. 7 p.m. on Saturday. Get yourself down there. Some great crowds for pre-season, which has been absolutely phenomenal. A testament to the hard work put in behind the scenes, but also to the fans on turning out to those games. If you can't get down, Mr. Kitchen will be there to take you through every single touch of the puck in Giants TV. Uh, any other business, my friends? David, you want to go first? I sent you a little picture through there, Paddy. I don't know whether you got it or not, but obviously this time last week we were talking about Blake heading over to the Well Child Awards. Ah, yes. Um, he I was. He, he, he somewhat fantastically gave. Um, I think he's still a prince. I'm not sure if he's a prince here or whether he's just Harry now. Yes. Um, still Prince Harry. Um, give Prince Harry a uh, a customized Belfast Giants jersey, which I'm sure he'll, he'll be wearing as he walks along the beach in Santa Monica tomorrow. But. Um, True, it's absolutely yeah, yeah. he looks absolutely fantastic in his little tail suit as well and just absolutely congratulations to him and pixie and the family because it's been a hard old slog and he does things with a smile on his face he's an inspirational boy. he's an inspirational man he's not a boy anymore um so you know congratulations to them all i think it's it's brilliant and it's a testament that just them as a family is how they've stuck together and stuck through this terrible illness that blake has and they've stuck at it and difficult going but you know, still here, still standing. Hmm. Credit as, I, as I said, to be you'll see, keep an eye out to be worn in an LA Kings game, no doubt. Uh, oh yes, pretty soon. The uh, no, fantastic. That teal suit looks absolutely. You you mentioned it the other day, says and you kept it on the wrap, saying that the, the, the suit yeah. looks great. It looks absolutely belter. Uh, it's 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 magic, um, and it's a great moment. You know, they can obviously treasure that and. Uh, you know, just listening to, to Christine and what have you and, and watching part of the, the interview when it was on, uh, seeing the video of it there last week. Um, and Prince Harry was, you know, he, he was really engaged with them. And, and it's not like you get a lot of these things and, they, oh, hi, Harry, I think there you go and, and away you go. That's not what this was about. And Harry spent a lot of time with Blake and the family. And, and um, yeah, and it's, it's just great to see. I mean, I don't know how many impressions that that, Jersey would have had now over the last week or ten days, but or sorry, last week, um, in uh, 
you know, with regards to uh, many times it's been seen online, it's been in every major newspaper, it's in Hello Magazine today. Um, but the exposure we get off that is just absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's all thanks to we Blake. Absolutely. Brilliant. Oh, yes, congratulations to him on receiving that award. Uh, a few says. Yeah, I just want to say a massive thanks to everybody who attended the uh, OSC Golf Day yesterday at Hollywood Golf Club. Um, the golf club course was brilliant. The um, Everything was about the whole uh, day. One little sprinkle of rain at about half past 11. Um, and I've seen one guy put his full wetsuit on. <laughs> I mean, literally, you couldn't have got better if you jumped, jumped about the place. I do that. Uh, in that little shower. But uh, um, one guy put his wetsuit on, and then when I seen him about three minutes later, he's standing taking it off. But um, no, it was the weather was great, um, which is, you know, it's, it's tough to ask for a, a good day when you're holding, a, as in weather wise, when you're holding a, a golf competition. So fantastic. Congratulations to the winners. Uh, thanks to Chiron Media, who sponsored the event. Thanks to McGurk's uh, Golf, who sponsored some of the prizes, and everybody at the OSC and everybody attended. Absolutely brilliant. Really, really appreciate your help. Looks like it was a great day, mate. Absolutely brilliant day. It's great crack. I want to see the shot by Jason Bowen hit into the, the sixth hole. So we pitched downhill about 110 yards. If that, actually, if it's 110. Um, and he put you about 18 inches. And he, I believe you me, he's not going to let you forget it. Oh no! He'll bring it. If you not. meet him in a bar, he will bring that up. Hundred percent, <laughs> he's bringing it up. It looks like also that uh, Jeff Bomb's dad, Jeff Bomb, had a good time as well. He's lots of photographs on Twitter. Oh, he loves it. Like I think, he, I think he's in London today. I think he's yeah, in London. Yeah, um, yeah. Fairly gets around. Uh, that yeah, no, it's great to see Jeff. He was over for the match, obviously, on Saturday. I think he was in uh, Innsbruck the week in last Innsbruck, yeah. Thursday. Um, yeah, he gets about, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm jealous of that. And he's, right. he's, online, he's online watching, so hello, Jeff Bomb's dad. Oh, very Jeff good. Bomb. Jeff Bomb's dad, Jeff Bomb. The, uh, and with that, gents, I think I think that's a wrap. Um, big thanks to Jeff Bomb's son, Jeff Bomb, uh, Jacob Friend, Oliver Cooper, Jeff Mason, Rob Fitzpatrick, who for those post games. Uh, of course, to Aaron Murphy and to Tyler Besker Owani for their time. You can get us on, I still call it Twitter, X. Uh, at at AVFTV, like, uh, I don't I don't even where to start on it. At AVF at AVFTV on Twitter, you can get us on Facebook, KingdomOfTheGiants dot com, and of course you can email us podcast at KingdomOfTheGiants dot com. The two games, as we said, Friday seven thirty p.m. against the Clan away at the Brayhead. You get down Clan TV, and then back to the SSC Arena for the game against the preseason game against the Clan uh, at seven p.m. on Saturday. And if you can't make it down to that, then join Mr. Kitchen on Belfast Giants TV. Gentlemen, an absolute pleasure. Good to see us. Glad you can hear us, Sis. Got that all sorted out. Sorry about nice that earlier on. Yep. Nice Thank work. You. No, we can keep it rolling, mate. We, we did it all. Um, yes, and thanks to everybody for tuning in and putting up this through a, few, a little bit of a, a YouTube blip. But uh, we'll, we'll get that sorted out for, for next week. And wherever you are this weekend, we hope you enjoy your hockey. And we'll catch you here next time on a view from the bridge. The game's the world, still you